It's September 4th. I'm Chris Waters, and you're watching GameSpot News because the news you've been waiting for is finally here. It's not Half Life 3, and it's not Final Fantasy VII HD Remake, but it is the Xbox One release date. Drum roll, please. Okay, no drum roll, it's November 22nd. Friday, November 22nd. So if you live in Australia, Austria, Brazil, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Spain, the US, the UK, or the NZ, you've got a scant 11 weeks to prepare your bank account and your social calendar for the arrival of the Xbox One. The November 22nd date puts it a week after the PlayStation 4's North American launch date of November 15th, but a week earlier than the PS4's European launch date of November 29th. For $499, €499, Euro, or £429, you'll get yourself an Xbox One, a controller, the Kinect, a headset, and an HDMI cable. Probably also like a power cable, Ethernet cable, a bunch of plastic and cardboard and twist ties, and a pamphlet with beautiful multi-generational, multi-ethnic groups of people having a grand old time. And you'll also be getting a CPU with a few more megahertz, according to a report by GeekWire. Xbox Chief Marketing Officer Yusuf Mehdi announced that the Xbox One CPU has been boosted by 150 megahertz, raising it to a total of 1.75 gigahertz, and prompting a slew of people in the GameSpot comments to fondly remember their PCs that ran at that level more than a few years ago. Maybe they've been planning it this way all along, but it seems a little late in the game for this kind of announcement. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Just a few more stories here for you today, including the revelation that Microsoft turned down an opportunity to publish Heavy Rain on the Xbox 360. Polygon reported that during his presentation at the BAFTA Annual Games Lecture in London, Heavy Rain director David Cage said that Microsoft, quote, didn't want the scandal of being associated with a game with child abduction as a central theme. Cage allowed that Microsoft really wanted to do something with his studio, Quantic Dream, but the two just couldn't come together on the project, which is why you will never press A to Jason. Sony chimed in with a bit of news as well, announcing via Twitter that the PlayStation 4 will support up to four controllers simultaneously. So there, N64. Seems a bit odd to clarify this point, but remember that Microsoft recently said that the Xbox One will support up to eight controllers, and that the PlayStation 3 can currently handle up to seven at the same time. I don't know who all these Scrooge McDucks are that swim in giant vaults of dual shocks, but four is the limit for the PS4. If you're planning on buying both consoles, what you save on Dual Shock 4, you can spend on making up the difference for the Xbox One. It may be $100 more than the PS4, but rest assured that Microsoft VP Yusuf Mehdi thinks that $500 for the Xbox One is a very good deal. Though it will retail for $100 more than the Xbox 360 did at launch in 2005, Medi said that when adjusted for price inflation, it's actually pretty comparable. So, Medi thinks you're going to be getting your money's worth come November 22nd, but what do you think? Send us your thoughts on the Xbox One via Twitter using the hashtag GSNews, and subscribe to us on YouTube as we count down the weeks until the launch of the new consoles. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow.